It's raining. It's gray, dismal, and dreary out. Welcome to the Midwest. I'm reading to you from what is called the Authorized Version of the Scriptures, also known as the King James Version. I'm reading to you from the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verses 20 on to verse 25. I do not expect you to have in your possession an authorized version of the scriptures. But if you do, please follow me along. Like I said, I don't expect you to. If anything, you have what is called a Bible, and not the scriptures. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 under verse 25. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink. In drinking you get drunken and spew, and your mind gets altered, and you utter perverse things. And your eyes wander, don't they? Which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root, their root, their roots shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust. Your root is as rottenness. Because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and, hath, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel, Therefore is his anger is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he has stretched forth his hand against them, and has smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Their root shall be as rottenness. Their root shall be as rottenness. If you've come across this video, this video is to, number one, inform you, warn you, and give to you a scriptural, the scriptural solution to your sin of sodomy. Gay, homosexual, faggot, queer, lesbian, butch, dyke. You know, according to the scripture, gay means happy, joyous, the gay clothing. And while some of you out there who are gay, homosexual, may think you are happy now, you're merely enjoying the pleasures of sin for a season. And you look here online, you, you might have even encountered some of these so-called Christians who tell you a, a wide variety of things when it comes to your sin of sodomy. You'll hear the Christians in the church buildings saying, God loves you, and God's not angry at you, and God's not going to judge you. 
That's a lie. Okay? From those who hear the... Pray the gay away. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All the while not informing you that you are a sinner on your way to hell. You're lost. And then you also hear about these Baptists with their little cutout signs that says, God hates fags. Right? I saw a video on that once of the one of these Baptists with one of those signs, God hates fags. And a sodomite boy confronted this man. And they had a, um, a little dialogue between them. And at one point in this video, I wish I had the video to, to show you. And at some point in this video, the young son of my boy finally said to the uh, Christian with the sign, Okay, what do I do? What, what's, what is your answer? What, 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 what does God say? Tell me. Tell me. And what, what did this godly Baptist do with the sign, God hates fags? What did he do? Did he go ahead and take the scriptures? It's like, okay, come on, come here, come here. Don't you know? Don't be afraid to get you know elbow to elbow. You know, don't be afraid. But did he do this? He's like, okay, come here. here. Let me show you. I want you to see. Okay, I want you to see what I'm looking at. What I'm going to show you here. Okay, come here, come here. Let me show you. Look. Did he do that? No, he didn't. You want to know what he did? He did almost exactly this. I'll give you the answer. Holding his sign. Repent or perish. And he did exactly that. And the, the, the son of my boy was like, What? That's it? What What does that mean? How does that do? How? how what? And the guy is like, Repent or perish! Da, 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 da. Pray the gay away too, right? <laughs> Who are you praying to? Why are you praying to him? Hmm? You see him online here. These uh, new IFB guys, new independent, independent fundamental Baptists, led by a guy by the name of Stephen Anderson. I don't know if you've heard of that man. Uh, if you haven't, great. But if you had, um, he says that Sodomites can't be saved, and he teaches a variation which is called the Calvinist reprobate doctrine, saying that you as a Sodomite, that you've been given over to a reprobate mind, that you cannot be saved, and you're going to hell no matter what. It's a form of what is known as the Calvinistic reprobate doctrine. Calvinists teach that there is elect and non-elect. One is going to hell whether they do anything, can't do anything about it. One is going to heaven, can't do anything about it. No free will in the matter, okay? Um, if you've ever come across that Steve Anderson and his uh, new IFB types people, you, you'll recognize them. Um, Steven Anderson himself, as probably some of you sodomites who have seen him already realize, hey, that guy's also a sodomite. Yes, Stephen Anderson is also a sodomite himself. He is. He is. And you hear all these things. But, and you hear the condemnation towards your sin, which I'm going to inform you of today. But they all seem to come a little bit short when giving you the solution. And, and, and those of you out there who are sodomites, you come up, well, I was born that way. We're born sinners, yes, but see, you are, it's a choice. You're not born gay. That's nonsense. Uh, one second. There's something I want to get across to you, and I'm going to you illustrate by a point. You're not born, born gay. No one is taking a loaded gun and pointing it to your head, forcing you to do something. God is not at gunpoint forcing you to do something. And you want to know what else, dear friend? 
Satan, the devil, also is not holding a loaded gun at your head, forcing you to do something. You're not being held at gunpoint. You have to remember that. You might be saying, who are you? Who are you? I was you. My testimony will be in the description box of this video. I was you. I was a sodomite. I've done it all. All the sexual perversion that you can think of. Almost all. Excuse me. There are some things I have never done. But um, I was you. I was a sodomite. And the Lord saved me. See, a lot of these people who preach to you against sodomy, like I said, will show you, condemn you, yes. But when it comes to their presenting to you the gospel, the truth, the, your cure, they, go, they wax short, they fall faint. I've been there. I was one of you. So the one who is speaking to you today doesn't come to you without any knowledge or history or past within what it is you are dealing with or living in or living through. I've been there. I've been there. And you want to know who saved me from it? The Lord Jesus Christ, God my Father. <laughs> And you know, hmm, want to know what really, really did it? The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. The fear of going to hell. The fear of standing before him and giving an account of everything that I've done. The fear of the Lord. If you don't want to hear the, the truth, dear friend, whether you're male or female sodomite, if you don't want to hear the truth, go away. You might be intimidated because this video is going to be quite long. But I'm going to give you scriptural evidence to convict you. I'm going to warn you. Do we understand each other? And today, you pretty much have the government in your, on your side, LGBTQ or whatever it is, okay? When you have your friends, Disney, <laughs> Disney is out there to help, to promote sodomy, is being okay, even going as far as pedophilia nowadays. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Good, evil, which the world calls evil good. There are those out there who still stand against sodomy. Yes, they are. Yes, there are. Yes, they are. But because of the Baptist influence and because of the hypocrisy of Satan's church, Roman Catholicism, and the hypocrisy of Christianity in general. And by the way, I'm not a Christian. You're not? No, I'm of the Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the ground and pillar of truth. There's a difference. Don't confuse me, by the way, with one of those Christians in the building, with one of these Christians online. Don't associate me with one of them because I'm not one of them. I'm of the Church of God. Church of the Living God. Okay? Like I said, I don't expect you to have an authorized version of the Scriptures. To be quite honest, I don't expect you to even have a Bible. There's a difference. Okay? Even though this says Holy Bible on it, within, within the pages here, 
within the pages here, the scriptures does not refer to itself as such. The scriptures or the word of God. Okay? But I don't expect you to have a Bible or to even have the scriptures. Like I said, if you do, follow me along. But if not, listen. Listen. We as man, mankind, started off pretty bad. Started off good at the creation. Pure, holy, uncorrupted relation with God. But Satan came along and tempted the woman. And some of you sodomites will even bring that up. And you're going to note that I'm going to say things like, you sodomites, I'm not a sodomite anymore. I was rescued from that. Okay? Is there still struggle? Is there still temptation? Yes. Yes. Yes, there is. It does not go away because in this sense, there's a hatred for it because God hates it. But you know what never goes away? Those memories. Those memories. Therein lies the struggle. But you can be set free from it. But ever since the Garden of Eden, when Satan went on to the woman, and so like I said, some of you sodomites bring that up as a reason why to hate women or to choose men. Um, Satan said unto Eve, Yea, hath God said. And they disobeyed God and ate the fruit of the tree and got kicked out. And in Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 and 8, this is before the flood, okay? In Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 and 8, uh, verses 5 on to verse 8, excuse me. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Due to the fall, due to the Garden of Eden, we're all born in the flesh sinners. Okay, a little boy, well, you're born an infant and there, uh, you grow up as a child. There is a period of life where you are, you are not aware of the consequences. You are not aware of that you have sinned against God, that it is your fault that God died because of sin. Okay, uh, there is a point where a child will become accountable knowing the truth that they have sinned against God and understanding of it. An understanding of it. It is referred to as the age of accountability, okay? And before a child reaches that age, whatever it is, there is no specific age. It depends on the child. It depends on the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Um, it depends on the age of the child when that comes. But until that time, a child will be innocent because of ignorance. But when you become aware, you are no longer innocent. Okay. All right. But verse 5 again. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. It doesn't look good for mankind. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. So repentance, repented, has grief to it. And the Lord didn't have to repent because he was a sinner. No, he repented and it repented the Lord. He was sorry and he regretted making man upon earth. That's what that means. Okay? Yes. He created us originally to be holy, pure, undefiled. But sin came in when we as man disobeyed and did what he said not to do. And hence it repented him. He, he was sorry that he made man. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Well, why would he kill everything else and not just man? Because man's sinful influence affects everything about him. And you know that is true, don't you? You ought to. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, 
both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The, the name Noah means comfort. Grace, comfort. Okay? Now, in Genesis chapter 10, the word sodomy is derived from Sodom, an actual place, a, time, a place in time that existed. The first time that you hear of Sodom in the authorized version of scriptures is Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. And, uh, no, not verse 6. Um, it's verse, uh, what is it actually? Um, uh, verse 19. But, okay, check this out. I want to show you the association of Sodom. Now, after the flood, when God destroyed the world with the flood, said he was never going to do it again, he put his bow in the sky to be a remembrance and covenant that he would never destroy the earth again by a flood. He's going to do it a different way. Okay? After the flood, okay, there were certain people, eight in total, that were on the ark. Never mind that stupid movie with Russell Crowe. That's a lie. Okay? Based off of truth, but it's a lie. Okay? No one, his wife, and his three sons and their wives. There were eight people on that boat, on the ark. Okay? And after the flood, the, oh, the earth was, over, uh, was populated, overrun, by the sons of Noah. And they are Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem are the Asiatics, such as the Chinese, Japanese, Koreans, and stuff like that. The Jews, the Hebrews, Israel, and stuff like that. Okay? Ham, the Egyptians, the Africans. Okay? Japheth, the Europeans, like the British, the, English, the, the British, the French, Norwegians, and stuff like that. Okay? Those are the three races. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay? All right? And we look here in Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Ham, the father of the Africans, of the Egyptians, the Hamite people, okay? And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim and Phut and Canaan, and Canaan, okay? Then we go to verses 8 to 9, here in the same chapter. And Cush begat Nimrod. Nimrod is very significant. Why? Because Nimrod, Babel, Babylon, the Tower of Babel. Nimrod and his wife, the Queen of Heaven, uh, Queen of Heaven also known as Diana, uh, Semiramis. Uh, the Queen of Heaven talked about in Scripture is the Roman Catholic Mary, Diana of the Ephesians, okay? The Mary that the Catholics talk to you about, by the way, is not the true Mary of the Scriptures. Okay, the Mary that the Catholics are telling you about is the wife of this Nimrod. Okay, and Nimrod, and Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And let's read verse 10. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Babylon. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Babel, the Tower of Babel, or Babel, where God confounded the languages and separated everybody because everybody could understand each other and had the same speech and whatnot like that. And what did they do? They began to make themselves uh, towers to reach unto heaven to exalt themselves. So Nimrod... His kingdom was what? And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. And Erech, and Akkad, and Kelne in the land of Shinar. Okay? And verse 15. And Canaan begat Sidon, Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth. Okay? So Canaan is the son of Ham. And Nimrod came from the descendants of Ham. Now verses 19 and 20. 
And the border of the Canaanites, those who were derived of Canaan, who is the son of Ham, okay, was from Sidon, as thou goest, comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom, and Gomorrah, and Adma, and Zeboim, even unto Lasha. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. So, Sodom and Gomorrah are linked with Ham. Hmm. And Nimrod, of course, was a Hamite. I believe that Ham, uh, Nimrod, Nimrod was actually black. Okay? And unlike what the Mormons say, that the, those who have a black skin are cursed, okay, uh, today anyone can get saved. Whether you are of Ham or of Japheth, which are the Europeans, or of Shem, and from Shem derives the Hebrew line, okay? There are those who are of Shem but are not Hebrew, okay? So we see Sodom and Gomorrah linked with Ham. That's very interesting to note, okay? And now go to Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13, verses 8 on to verse 13. Now, Abram and Lot, they were together. God called uh, Abram out of his country and his kindred to go onto a land that the Lord God would show him. Okay? And he took Lot, his uh, nephew, with him. But they both became prosperous and they couldn't dwell together. Okay? That's the backstory. Picking up at verse 8 on verse 13. And Abram said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen. For we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt not, if thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Okay? Let's separate because we're brethren. Let's not get into anything. We can't dwell together because there's too much between us both. So let's separate. Okay? Separate. Okay? Verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Hmm. So, Lot looked, and of course, Lot would go on to Sodom. But it looked appealing. It looked well watered. It looked appealing. It looked like there would be an abundance, fullness of bread there. It looked beautiful. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Hmm. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east. And they separated themselves one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan. And Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. Sodom. And that land in which a Lot, it says right there, Lot chose him the plain of Jordan. Okay? Okay. Lot lifted up, verse 10, Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. It looked beautiful. It looked sustaining. Verse 13, But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Wicked. Mm. And sinners before the Lord exceedingly. That's Sodom. Okay, and now Genesis chapter 14, verses 17 on to verse 24. Now, this is, uh, we're looking at this very, we're looking at the history of the word sodomy, where this came about, okay? Where this came about, how this came about. Before the flood were men lying with men and uh, women with women? I reckon there was, yes. But it is not noted for us in the scripture until after the flood, after God had cast his judgment. Because the heart of man is wicked. Desperately wicked. 
above all things. Okay? But we're looking at this to show you the origins of Sodom and that from the get-go, Sodom was nothing good in the sight of God's eyes, but evil, wicked, and sinful. And we're looking at this here in uh, Genesis 14 to show you a little bit of what Sodom was about, okay? Because uh, it's important to note about the rulers, the kings, okay? Very quickly, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, we read just, uh, just one verse. In Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 12, we read this. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. Okay? And then we read in Proverbs chapter 14, Proverbs chapter 14, Proverbs chapter 14, just one verse as well, if my fingers will get us there. Proverbs chapter 14, one verse, verse 34, Righteousness, righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So if a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. And righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. If the rulers are bad, not now, not all the people are, but see, the rulers are responsible for the people. Okay? And the rulers generally reflect the populace. Not all people within that populace, obviously, but in a general sense. Okay? you got to remember that. Okay, so Genesis 14, verses 17 on to verse 24. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him, uh, uh, Abram. Backstory, um, Chedolamor, king of Elam and all his people, they went and uh, attacked so uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and whatnot. More importantly, they took their goods and took Lot and all that he had captive. And Abram the Hebrew heard about it. And he took his armed uh, men, his servants that were armed, trained of his own house, and went and rescued Lot from these people and uh, just obliterated them what, and whatnot. So after that Lot was taken captive, Abram with his trained servants, trained and born of his own house, went and rescued Lot. Okay? This, that's the backstory here in Genesis 14. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after the return, after his return from the slaughter of Chedor, Chedor Lamor, and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Sheba, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, Salem, uh, transliterated word for shalom, Salem, peace, okay? brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. This is a precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, just so you know, okay? And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Verse 21. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. Hmm. Hmm. Let's keep reading. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. The wicked providing pain for, or providing giving things unto the just, so that you can say, well, from wicked people, I received this. Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me, a near Eshkol and Mamre. Let them take their portion. 
Verse 21 uh, here, it's very telling, and I'll tell you why. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. So the king of Sodom was more interested in the people rather than the goods, which I'm sure had like a raiment, food, gold, weapons, all that kind of stuff. He wanted the people. This verse suggests to us that Sodom and their king, that Sodom dealt in slavery, perhaps. Uh, there, I mean, there's, I mean, we're going on conjecture here. But, I mean, verse 21 is very telling. Nowadays, we hear of this thing called human trafficking, right? Where in other countries, and even in America, women, men, but women held in slavery to be prostitutes, sex slaves. And the children that these women uh, bear in prostitution and whoredom, these people, whoever they are, will raise these children themselves to be whores and prostitutes. That happens even today. And this suggests, and the king of Sodom said unto Abram, give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. This suggests that, that Sodom traded in men, in man, in flesh. Okay? Uh, and also about how Abram said, I don't want anything of you. Uh, also that, Proverbs 23, Proverbs chapter 23, Proverbs chapter 23, we want verses 3 on to verse 5. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own will, wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Hmm. Hmm. But uh, going back now to Genesis, about verse 21 here in 14, that Sodom and, Sodom and their king and the people, uh, it suggested that they dealt with Human trafficking, as we call it today. Hmm. Give you evidence to this? Okay. Genesis chapter 18 now. Genesis chapter 18. We want verses 16 on to verse 22. Three men appear. Okay. On to uh, Abraham. These three men, one was God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, a precarnate form before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? And the other two were angels. So one was God, and the other two were angels. Trinitarians will like to say that this is the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, all in bodily form. That's a lie. The Trinity is satanic heresy, okay? No, uh, one was God. And the other two were angels, okay? And they were come, the angels were going to go destroy Sodom, okay? That was the backstory. Genesis 18, verses 16 on to verse 22. And the, men arose, and the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that, that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And the other two were men. And Abraham stood before the Lord. Okay? And of course, 
This is where Abraham goes on to plead for the people of Sodom because Lot was in Sodom. That's why Abraham was pleading for the people of Sodom. Okay? And verses 32 and 33, it got, see, Abraham, if he could have, would have gotten down because he said, uh, Abraham's like, what if 50 people are, righteous people are there? Will you destroy the city because of, uh, will you not destroy the city because of 50 righteous people? And the Lord says, if I find 50 righteous there, I won't destroy the city. And Abraham willed him down to 10. Um, it is strongly suggested that if Abraham was given license the time that Abraham would have said, okay, will you not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because Lot is there? But the Lord's like, no, no, no. But verse 32 and 33, and he said, this is Abraham speaking to the Lord. Oh, let not the Lord be angry and I will speak it but this once. Peradventure 10 shall be found there. And he said, the Lord, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. Ten righteous people. If there were ten righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, the Lord would not destroy it. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. Yes, the Lord's like, okay, because I know what you're going to do. You're going to try to get me down to say, just because a lot is there, I won't destroy it. No, 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 no. So ten righteous people in Sodom. If there were ten righteous people, the Lord said he wouldn't have destroyed it. But in reality, there was only one righteous person in Sodom. And the Lord got him out of there before he destroyed it. Prove that to you. Verses 19, uh, chapter 19, verses 1 on to verse 13. Okay? And there came two angels to Sodom at even. That's the nighttime. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Sitting in the gate means that you are someone of authority in that city or whatever, okay? And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. Now, these were angels that Lot was talking to. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet. And ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. <laughs> and Lot's like, Whoa, 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 hey, you, you, you don't want to do that, okay? We'll see why, okay? And he pressed upon them greatly. So, hey, look, hey, guys, you, don't, you trust me around here. Your men, maybe they were good looking. We don't know. <laughs> but it's like, hey, you, you don't want to be around at night. Near. You don't want to stay outside. Come with me, okay? And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned into him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. So all the people of Sodom heard about how just two men, who were actually angels, two men, just two men, came onto Lot's house. Everybody heard about it. A whole city. And they went and compassed, circled Lot's place, okay? And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Now the know them is that, Hi, how you doing? My name's Bob. Hi, how you doing? My name's Jordan. No, 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 no. No. As you know, the term sodomy means men with men. Okay, and I'm not going to get graphic. We, we're adults here. We know what this means. Bring them out that we may know them. Have sex with them. That's what that's talking about. Okay? A whole city that they may rape two angels. Okay? This is why in uh, verse 21 of Genesis, what was that, uh, 18 that we looked at? No, in... Uh, in uh, Genesis 14, about how the king of Sodom said, give me the people, but you take all the goods. And when just two men came to the city of Sodom, the whole city, 
was on it, like stink on. And they all wanted to abuse and rape these two angels, these two men who were angels. Tells you what the city was like. That they were all about flesh, about perversion. And Lot does something that's not too bright, but, verse 6, And Lot went out at the door onto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters, which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. So see, verse 8 shows you that what their intention was, was not like, hi, I'm Bob, I'm John. No, it was sexual. Okay, And yeah, Lot was like, hey, take my two daughters and abuse and rape them, but don't abuse or rape the men. Okay? That's bad. Okay, that's very wicked. But it shows you, too, the seriousness of the sin of men lying with men. Oh, oh, you females out there, don't worry. We're, we're going to get to you eventually, don't worry. Very interesting little story about that, too, okay? Let's continue. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. <laughs> to boot the door, huh? Yeah, yeah. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door, and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. Hmm. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any person, any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Mm. Yes. Yeah. 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 And... Also here, looking across uh, the page here, to verse 22. The angels, a lot kind of lingered, you know, took his sweet time. And the angels were like, uh, hey, come on, get out of here. We're going to destroy this place. Okay, verse 22. Haste thee, escape hither, for I cannot do anything till thou come hither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. Hasty, come on, let's go. God was merciful. The only righteous man in Sodom was Lot. Okay, and that, that that's a thing of comfort because you go to uh, Genesis chapter 18, Genesis chapter 18, verses 23 under verse 25. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy the destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the only righteous man in all of Sodom our Lord spared and got him out of there before he destroyed it. And you know, too, some of you might be saying, well, like, mm, that, that was pretty harsh. That was pretty harsh. Uh, you got to remember, in the Psalms, in the book of Psalms, Psalm 101, okay? Psalm 101. Psalm 101 Verses 3 and 4. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. Shall not cleave to me. A forward heart shall not shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Hmm. We are to hate the work of those that turn aside. 
You're a sodomite. I was a sodomite. I hate what you do. I hate what you do. Okay? There are those of you that are ignorant. But then again, there are those of you who are not. This is a plea unto you. I hate sodomy. I was a sodomite. And I hate it. Because God hates it. And if you are a sodomite, you deserve to die. Okay? But you might be saying, well, that was a one-time incident, right? In the book of Judges, in the book of Judges, we see a very similar thing. Now, that was Sodom and Gomorrah. This happens within the children, uh, amongst the children of Israel, amongst Benjamin, okay? That evil of Sodom and Gomorrah, sodomy, was not destroyed with Sodom and Gomorrah. It lingered. And in Judges chapter 19, verses 22 under verse 30, uh, Levite went and sojourned, and um, his wife went and played the harlot, and he went after her to rescue her and to bring her back. And he went to her father's house, and he, his concubine, and they were in her, in her father's house doing this, Judges 19, verses 22 on to verse 30. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house that we may know him. Wow, huh? Wow. Wow. Exactly what happened in the book of Genesis. Okay? Exactly what happened in the book of Genesis. What's important to note is the book of Judges, this happened during the law. The law of the Lord, the law of Moses, the Mosaic law was given. Okay? Hence, the law was binding. And even then, even then, amongst Israel, God's chosen people sons of Belial. This happened, okay? And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and say, said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly. Here, this is almost word for word for what Lot said, isn't it? Right? I hate the work of those, them who turn aside will not cleave to me. Okay? Behold, yeah, Nay, brethren, verse 23, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man has come into my house. Do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden. <laughs> Depraved mind. Okay, look, you, you want to rape someone? Don't rape a man. Here, rape my daughter. Lot was a just man. The scriptures declare him so. But he made a terrible blunder there. Was like, well, here, hey, don't rape these men, which were angels, yes. But here, let me give you my daughters to rape them. And the scriptures declare a lot to be righteous. Because he was vexed. But see, the sin of sodomy is so severe. These people were going to do what they were going to do. They would rather, these people, they're justifying this like, here, at least do it to a woman instead of to a man. The level of depravity that one can be entrenched in by a wicked nation. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now and humble them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. Vile a thing. But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine. Now this is the man who went over hill and valley to get this very concubine who cheated on or did whatever and went against him. He went all over to bring her back onto him. Okay? And what does he do? The same one that he went to go looking for, he hands over to the crowd 
who wanted flesh? <laughs> now see, in the tale of uh, Lot and Sodom, that doesn't happen. The angels come out and smites everybody. It's like, get out of here. We're going to destroy y'all. So get out of here. But no, this guy brings his concubine. And, okay. But the men would not hearken to him. So the men took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. And her Lord rose up in the morning, heartless, cold, that this individual did, and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was fallen down at the door of the house, and her hands were upon the threshold. And he said unto her, Up, and let us be going. No thought to this woman at all. Shows where his mind was. Shows very revealing of the temperament, the mindset of the people at that time. Kind of like the people of America today. Okay? The, then the man took her up upon an ass, and the man rose up and got him onto his place. And when he was come into his house, he took a knife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her together with her bones into twelve pieces and sent her into all the coasts of Israel. And it was so that all, all, that, all that saw it said, There was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider it. Consider of it. Take advice and speak your minds. That's the sin of sodomy for you. And this man was so depraved that it's like, okay, here, take, take my concubine, whom he traveled a distance to retrieve, to bring back, but to save his own skin. There were no angels there going to destroy that city, but to save his own skin. Here. Abuse my concubine. Now you got to remember too, they were greatly outnumbered. And it, it shows the mindset of the time of what this happened. And you, dear friend, don't think for a moment that that very mindset that you just saw isn't prevalent today in America. And even amongst yourselves. Even amongst yourselves. But see, sodomy, the sin of sodomy is so severe, so hatred, so hated, so putrid in the sight of God that these men, Lot and the angels came to the rescue. Yes, they did. Okay. But Lot and even this man were willing to hand over females whom they loved in order to prevent men from doing the sin of sodomy. That shows you something. And in Deuteronomy chapter 23, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 17 and 18. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Now there the term sodomite, okay? Sodomite. We're going to look at all the references to the word sodomite. Sodomite. And Sodom, those of Sodom, were men who wanted sexual relations with men. Okay? Hence the term Sodomite. That's where the term Sodomy comes from. See? A Sodomite. You're a Sodomite. You like to lay with men. You're a female. You're a woman. And you like to lay with women. You're a female Sodomite. Okay? God is not for men laying with men or women laying with men at women. Okay? He's not for it. He hates it. Okay? But see, you go to some of these Christian church buildings, like these disgusting Unitarians. There's one here in McHenry uh, by, uh, uh, what is it, Nimsey Hospital, a Unitarian church building that says, love is love, meaning it's okay to be gay. No. No. And verse 18 
Thou shalt not bring the price, thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So bringing the hire of a whore or the price of a dog and the hire of a whore. Verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Okay? Obvious. Nor a sodomite. Verse 18. Or the price of a dog. Price of a dog. Sodomy, sodomites are equated onto dogs. And, and about that, um, 2 Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2, just wanted to may, uh, bring this to your attention, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. Mm. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog male is returned to his own vomit again. And the sow, a pig, that was washed to her, female, wallowing in the mire. And of course, this is a reference, there's a reference onto uh, Proverbs chapter 26, Proverbs 26, the fool's proverb, okay, where this is quoted from, okay. God hates sodomy, dear friend. And also there, within Deuteronomy chapter 23, you see a connection that is sinful in equating whoredom and sodomy with religion. Kind of like with the Freemasons. Okay? The higher upper echelons of the Freemasons. Uh, when you get into the degrees of the 30s, like a 33 degree Freemason, there is uh, evidence that suggests that um, sodomy is involved in acquiring the 33rd degree of Freemasonry. And also, remember the Knights Templar in history, their little ceremony, which is reminiscent to the Jesuit ceremony of induction, also involved sodomy. But you see here the sinful practice of bringing whoredom and sodomy into religious practice all stemming from Babylon. Babylon. And who's associated with Babylon? Nimrod. Prove this to you. Absolutely. First Kings, First Kings chapter 14, First Kings chapter 14, verses 21 on to verse 24. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah, Rehoboam was 40 and 1 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel, to put his name there, and his mother's name was Nama and Ammonitus. And Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, which they had committed above all that their fathers had done. Now here, check this out. For they also built them high places and images and groves on, e on every high hill and under every green tree. And there were also sodomites in the land. And they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. So you see sodomy linked with satanic ritual. You hear about satanic ritual abuse, the Illuminati, which is a branch of the Jesuits, uh, the Hollywood people uh, engaging in sodomite things, sodomite ritual, okay? All right? And also in 1 Kings, go to 15, verses 9 on to verse 12. And in the twelfth year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, reigned Asa over Judah. And forty and one years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Macha, the daughter of Absalom. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land, and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. And also Macha, his mother, 
He, he even her, he removed from being queen. Because she had made an idol in a grove, and Asa destroyed her idol and burnt it in the brook Kidron. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. And he brought in the things which his father had dedicated, and the things which himself had dedicated, into the house of the Lord, silver and gold and vessels. Okay, and there's also a reference to this very thing in um, uh, First Kings chapter 22, and we're gonna we're gonna look at every appearance of the word sodomite. Okay, uh, First Kings chapter 22 verses 45 and 46. Now Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, who was the son of uh, Jehoshaphat, was the son of Asa. Okay, and Jehoshaphat made peace with the king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and his might that he shewed and how he wore, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And the remnant of the Sodomites, which remained in the days of his father Asa, he took out of the land. Okay? Asa, a godly king. Jehoshaphat, his son, a godly king. Removing the Sodomites, okay? And Sodomites here, in these contexts that we're looking at, had a religious implication. Now, sodomy today does not have merely a religious implication, but you got, you know, the friends at Disney and all the Illuminati uh, ritual sex abuse and stuff like that, and the sodomy that's um, there within the Freemasons and their rites and their passages. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sodomy is satanic. God hates sodomy. And if you are going to persist, persist in sodomy, God's hatred is for you. Yes, it is. Second Kings chapter twenty-three now. And very interesting to note. Five times sodomite. Five is the number of death. And Satan, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verses 12 under 15, says, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Five, the number of death. Uh, 2 Kings, chapter 23, verses 3 on verse 7. And this is talking about Josiah, a godly king. And the king stood by a pillar... And made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul. To perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people stood to the covenant. And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove and for all the host of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron, and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. And he put down the idolatrous priests, whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah, and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun, and to the moon, and to the planets, and to all the host of heaven. And he brought out the, out the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook Kidron and burnt it and, and burned it at the brook Kidron and stamped it to powder and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people. Verse 7. And he break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord where the women wove hangings for the grove. So by the house of the Lord, the house of the Sodomites. See, sodomy that we're looking at, Sodomite here, had a religious implication, okay, with the religious rites and practices of Baalite, worship of the sun and stuff like that. Purely satanic. Purely satanic. Sodomy, dear friend. Man with man, women with women, is sin. And God hates it. And that is a sin that infects and can destroy a people and a nation. 
Leviticus chapter 18 now. Leviticus chapter 18. One second, brethren. Leviticus chapter 18. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 18. Sin is a reproach to any people. Sexual sin. When a nation gets involved in sexual sin, that is the beginning of its downfall. And that little rabbit here, I find it very interesting that today you have, I'm using this man just as an example, Peter Ruckman and his followers, Ruckmanites. Peter Ruckman's material, you have to, I mean, you can get some here on YouTube, but if you want the bulk of his material, you have to pay money to get the, uh, his material. Why you would, I don't know, but you do. The Ruckmanites, unless someone has bought their material, have gone after YouTube channels and have them shut down because of copyright things. And in order to get the deeper things that Peter Ruckman taught, you have to uh, pay these blood-sucking leeches money in order to get the godly teachings of Peter Ruckman. And uh, they are ven venomous about it. But now here's the thing with these Christians and you and you guys hear about this you got to pay uh, so much money to so and so in order to get the deeper teachings of something of scripture or to pay money to get a book when you have the book that teaches you about the Godhead but no you got to go pay money to some guy to get his his teachings on this okay and yeah a man is to make a living I get that but it always strikes me that these Christians out there are so ready to charge money for their teachings, but yet you can go on a porn site and readily download sodomite pornography, bestiality pornography, true incest pornography. That you can readily download for free in abundance. But certain teachings from Christians, they, they withhold from you and go after you if you don't pay them money. I've always, I've always had a problem with that. I've always had a problem with that. Why is it that you can go to a porn site and download it as much as you want freely, but then again with some of these so-called Christians, they are Christians, yeah, uh, in order to get the deeper things that you want to understand, you got to pay them. What? I, I've never understood that. I've never understood that. I've never understood that. It bothers you too, doesn't it? it? Bothers you too. It should. It should. Hey, you know, you authors out there. And gra and granted, granted, a man's gotta make a living. Amen. But if someone's like, hey man, I can't afford it, you hand me one? No. Can I share? Well, I bought it. Can I share? Can, or, or I got it. Can I share it? No. You need my permission. But yet, people can go and get porno videos for free. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for that little rabbit. Leviticus chapter 18. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, the world. Egypt is the type of the world. Okay? Wherein ye dwelt, ye shall not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. See, when the Lord saves you and calls you out of the world, away from sin, and you are in the world but not of the world, you are not to be as the world to win the world. And how many of you sodomites out there are put off by these Christians who are trying to be buddy-buddy with you and you don't see anything different in them at all? And that's something. Yeah. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. 
I am the Lord. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Uncover her nakedness as to see them naked or to have sex with them. Okay? The nakedness of thy father's wife, your stepmother, shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father or the daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. Whether or not you have the same daddy or mommy, okay? If you have the same daddy or mommy, okay? Evil, if you have uh, same daddy, different mommy, or same mommy, different dad, doesn't matter, okay? You know, half-brother or whatever. Um, brothers and sisters, no, sin. Well, they did before, uh, before the law, yes. And the gene pool was pure, yes. They did that before. Yes, because how was the earth uh, populated before the law was given? Yes, brother and sister slept with each other uh, during uh, before the law was given. Yes, in early times. Yes, but you got to remember, the gene pool was purer at, at that time, so there would be no defects like there are nowadays. And plus, this is the law. God forbids it now. Okay? Okay? Yes, there was incest. At the beginning to populate the planet, yes, there was. Okay, but you got to remember the gene pool was purer way back when. Okay, but now since the flood, since the flood, the earth is populated. There's much to choose from. Okay, okay. Verse ten: The nakedness of thy son's daughter or thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness, thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife's of thy father's wife's daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Uncover their nakedness. To see them naked and to have sex with them. Okay? Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister. She is thy father's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thine aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. She is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. And there are pornographic videos that you can download for free. But you got to pay $30 for a Ruckman book. Okay? But there are pornographic videos out there that you can download for free that does every single solitary thing that we have just looked at. And there are people out there doing every single solitary thing that we just looked at right now today. But you got to give money to a ministry in order to get the deep, deeper teaching, huh? Yeah. Okay, let's continue. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. They, for they are her near kinswoman. It is wickedness. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. Also thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. Graphic, beg your pardon, uh, you are not to be with a woman when she is having her menstrual cycle. Okay? I broke that one too before I was saved. Okay? Moreover, Thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. And also, this is uh, 
also said again in Leviticus, uh, kind of mentioned in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So if a man has sexual relations with a man, according to scriptures, you are, the scriptures, you are worthy of death. I was worthy of death. You want to hear something interesting about verse 22 here? When I was working in the secular work uh, workforce, I came across a female sodomite. Talking to her. And she brought up the conversation. You know what this female sodomite said to me? At, at the moment, it, I, I had to take a step back because I was not expecting it. But you know what this female sodomite said to me? She said, it says man shall not lay with man. It doesn't say anything about a woman laying with a woman. Yeah. A female sodomite who looked like a man, talked like a man. And about that, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22, you know, Tyler Perry, the house of pain. Okay, Mr. Tyler Perry. Uh, and he's a Christian who put his head on T.D. Jakes and did whatever. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's, appear, uh, a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Very quickly. Monty Python. They did skits like that where they dressed up as women. That's an abomination. And a woman dressing up like a man, that's an abomination. But like I said, I had a female sodomite try to quote this to me. Saying it says man shall not lie with mankind. It doesn't say anything about a woman. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah, really, huh? There's a problem there. There's a problem there. Uh, what's that problem? Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verses 18 on to verse 27. Here's your problem. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 27. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You're, you're without excuse. You want to prove there's a God? Look outside your window. Look at a leaf. Look at your own self. You have a spirit, soul, and body, just like God does. Okay? Because that when they knew God, just here, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Oh, you're gay, pride, you're so free, you're liberal, you're not bound by this crippling law. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to the corrupt like made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed who is blessed forever, amen. And Satan is a created being. But worship the creature, worshiping flesh, kind of like what they did in Sodom. Okay? For this cause, God gave them up onto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. What does that mean? 
men, women laying with women, doing that which is against nature. Prove to you that's what it's talking about, okay? And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Hmm. So you see, they're women. God is against women laying with women. It's against nature. And receiving the error of their, uh, and receiving the, in themselves that recompense of their error that was meat, death by disease, AIDS. Um, I personally believe that AIDS was created in a Jesuit laboratory, but God allowed it. Okay, I do not believe that AIDS was a God-made disease for punishment of sodomites. God allowed it to punish sodomites, yes. Okay, and not only sodomites, I know, blood transfusion, I get that. But it appeared first amongst the sodomite community, right? Okay, I believe that it was made by the Jesuit order, a man-made disease. Okay, but you can get herpes, you can get all kinds of things. And you know, right here, where it says, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. You know what I'm plagued with to this day, and I already mentioned it? Memories. All those awful, disgusting memories. Those plague me to this day. I'm saved, born again, a new creature in Christ Jesus, forgiven, going to heaven when I die. But those memories are still there. God can and will forgive you if you come to him on his terms. But I'm going to tell you, while you may have a hatred for what you once did, at least for me, those memories are still there. And at the worst time, Satan can bring them to light. A recompense for my error, which was meat. The memories, man. Oh. Just memories. Yeah. God hates sodomy of all kind. Men with men, women with women. Okay. And go back now to Leviticus if you're following me along. But like I said, I'm not expecting you to. Okay, Leviticus chapter 18 again, where we left off. Verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination, and it's worthy of death, both with you women and men. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before beasts to lie down there too in his confusion. And like I said, you can find pornographic videos on every single thing that we just looked at in Leviticus. And uh, being promoted by the government and by authorities and by people today. Pizzagate. Children's sex trafficking. See, what does sexual sin do to a nation and to a people? Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. For in all these things, for in all these, the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. The consequence sexual sin. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled, that the land spew you, spew not you out also, when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, 
that ye commit not any of the, any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. Look at America. Look at America. Okay? Look at America. And, and, and to continue with the New Testament, okay? To continue there, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Okay? Romans chapter 1 is enough to, to tell you uh, God hates sodomy. God hates sodomy. God hates incense, incest, bestiality. He hates it all. He hates sexual sin. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 18. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Now, a woman is supposed to be feminine. To act like a woman, to act like a lady. Not to act like Butch Myers, Joyce Myers, okay? So the effeminate there is not talking about females. The effeminate there is talking about a man acting like a little princess girl. Okay? Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with man mankind. Those who lie with men, men with men. A man lying with an effeminate man. A man in general. That's what that's talking about. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Spiritual kingdom. That's why when you see these Christians who claim to be gay and saved, uh, they're not saved. They may very, very well be a homosexual sodomite or a lesbian sodomite, whatever. But if they're claiming to say, well, I'm saved. No, you're not. Because God does not want you to stay in that. Okay? If you're going about saying, I'm a Christian and promoting it, love is love, God's... A, they're lost. Dear friend, those are the ones who are lying to you. Okay? Prove that to you? Absolutely. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. See, again, God does not hold a gun at your head at gunpoint and make you to do things. It doesn't work that way. Also, the devil doesn't hold a gun at your head to make you do things. It doesn't work that way. No. God wants you to make the right choices. You have free will to choose. But again, like I said, God's not holding the gun at your head. Okay? Nor, nor is Satan holding the gun at your head to force you to do anything. It doesn't work that way. You have free will. Okay? All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats, meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Now, if you're not saved, your body is not part of the church of the living God. Okay, if you're not saved, this doesn't apply to you. Okay? Shall I? But if someone's calling themselves a Christian or claiming to be saved and being in a sodomite relationship or fornicating... Uh, you know, uh, having sex before marriage, okay? And the marriage bed is undefiled. Uh, that's, uh, what is that? That's uh, Hebrews chapter 13. The marriage bed is undefiled, okay? Hebrews chapter 13, just one verse. Hebrews, come on, fingers work with me. 
Hebrews 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. See, between a man and a woman in the bed, all bets are off. Do whatever you want to do. Okay? But if that bed is a bed that is laid with man with man, woman with woman, or brother and sister, and s or brother with father, ugh. Okay? Okay? The marriage bed is undefiled. Okay? So if there's someone out there claiming to be saved and doing one of those things, they ain't saved. And promoting it? So, we as the church of the living God, yes, we can sin. We can make a mistake. Yes. But to promote it, say, God, I'm, God's okay with it. No, he's not. You're not saved. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh? But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Fornication. Sex outside the marriage bed before marriage. You're in sodomy. Incest. You're sinning against your own body. Okay? And being one flesh, sodomite, males, men, you sodomite men out there, being one flesh with Bob, uh, uh. hey, I've been there, done that myself. I was one. Okay. And First Timothy chapter 6, uh, First Timothy chapter 1, excuse me, First Timothy chapter 1. Verses 6 on to verse 11. Okay? From, from which some have swerved, having turned aside unto vain jangling, jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Like these gay Christians. Yeah. I saw a video of a kid who butchered uh, when our Lord said to Lazarus, come forth. I saw a short, a TikTok of a kid using that to justify Jesus helped someone come out of the closet. Blasphemy. Oh, you, oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, some bearded sodomite guy saying, Jesus helped a guy come out of the closet by, uh, and he used, Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, God help you, man. That's wicked. See, again, if you pervert, see, you couldn't get that from the text of Scripture. Someone knows the truth of that and perverts it, they're, they're gone, they're lost. They're an agent of the devil. There, there's no hope for a person like that. There isn't. If you're going to pervert the scripture plainly like that, then there's no hope. Okay? But let's continue. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. What is that talking about? Sodomites. Okay? For men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the God, glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Okay? Notice it says men stealers, human trafficking. Okay? And you might be saying, well, what did Jesus actually, Jesus never actually spake against sodomites. But this is what he did say in uh, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Okay? Mark chapter 10. Uh, 
You know why Jesus never uttered the word sodomite? Um, number one, he's God the Father, but he defined, he didn't even uh, touch on it. Why? But yet he did. Here in Luke and Mark chapter 10, verses 2 under verse 12. Okay? Mark chapter 10, verses 2 under verse 12. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him? And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart he wrote this, wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. That's Jesus speaking against sodomy. How so? He defines what a marriage is, a man and a woman, and that, it, that any relation of therein is between a man and a woman, male and female. Uh, Adam was made for, uh, excuse me, um, Eve was made for Adam, not Steve for Adam. Okay? I almost said Adam was made for Eve, not for Steve. <laughs> Feminists like that. But no, Eve was made for Adam, not Steve. Okay? God made man, then woman. Woman means of man. Okay? All right? From the beginning, it was male and female. He addressed the sodomy there. It's like, N -n -n no, no. I made you male and female. Okay? We'll stop at verse 9 because uh, that's, that's all we need to go for on that. But see what happens. A nation that, gives its, that is given over to sexual sin, that's run by the Vatican, what happens? Go to Ezekiel, or excuse me, go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 31 on to verse 35. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 31 on to verse 35. For their rock is not as our rock, and that's capital R, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. When a nation starts to indulge in sexual sin and turns against God, look at, look at America! Look at America! With gay marriage! Promoting sodomy with our friends at Disney. Promoting pedophilia. Bestiality in it. America's, and don't, and let's not forget legalized murder, abortion. This all stems from sexual sin. Sodom and Gomorrah, right outside your door. Okay? Okay? Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Verses 10 on to verse 17. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Now Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed at this time. He's using them as an example. Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed like that. But America? <laughs> Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of your God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, said the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, 
Who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling, away, calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Trying to say that sodomy is okay with being a Christian and bringing the things of Sodom and Gomorrah into what is called religion. Yeah, and uh, being in sin and yet uh, doing the mechanic of being a Christian. Yeah, right. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Why? Yea, when I, ye make many prayers, I will not hear you. Here, your hands are full of blood. Wash you. Make yourself, make you, wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Speak, seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Put away the sin. Put away the sin. Because remember, God will give you victory over sodomy. Yes, he will. But God doesn't force anything on you. And again, neither does the devil. Don't forget that. You won't forget it seeing this actual visual, will you? Will you? And you can see that's a loaded pistol. Okay? Now, Isaiah chapter uh, not, uh, 3 now. Isaiah chapter 3. Disney promotes sodomy and pedophilia. Sodomy is okay today. LGBTQ2 or whatever it is. Gay pride in the rainbow. Isaiah 3, verses 9 unto 11. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. And they declare their sin is Sodom. They hide it not. Yeah, look, at we, we saw Sodom. What they did. The whole city, when two men, who were angels, the whole city came to get some of that. Yeah. The shoe of their countenance, the countenance, their bodily thing, okay, doth witness against them. And they declare their sin is Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked. It shall be ill with him, for he shall, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. And hey, Satan says, if you fall down and worship me, all will be thine. And Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And, and no marvel that his ministers are transformed as the ministers of righteousness. And then you see that young bearded guy with the glasses saying, using the uh, how Jesus calls Lazarus out of the tomb as a way to say that Jesus helps somebody come out of the closet. I don't think so. I don't think so. And sin is made to look so beautiful, doesn't it? Because Satan, as an angel of light, and his ministers as angels, as uh, transformed as ministers of righteousness, it's okay to be gay. It's okay. God loves you. God's not going to judge you. Love is love. Jeremiah, chapter 6. Jeremiah, chapter 6. Verses 15 on to verse 17. <laughs> the gay pride, our nation today, here in America. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where, where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. 
And Jeremiah chapter 8. Just one verse. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 12. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. No, they don't blush. There's no shame in America today. Is there? And even though I vehemently detest Bill Maher, Bill Maher recently said that people are going gay because it's trendy to be gay. I agree with that. That people, because the Jesuit-controlled media wanting to keep this nation in the toilet and sin, gay is okay. Okay? It's, no, it's not. But see, even Bill Maher, that wicked scum devil that he is, said that kids are becoming gay nowadays because it's trendy to be gay. I agree with that. I agree with that. And yeah, it's not only in America. It's in Canada. It's in England. It's in France. Yes, it is. But I'm an American. I'm in America. The Jesuit nation of America. Okay? Ezekiel chapter 16. And on this, a uh, brother asked a question about this while the Lord and I were getting the notes together. And I looked at that, uh, got this like, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. And I even emailed him. It's like, oh, wow, oh, brother. Wow. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 45 on to verse 50. Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 45 on to verse 50. Behold, uh, excuse me, let's do 44 on the verse 50, beg your pardon. Behold, everyone that useth proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, As is the mother, so is her daughter. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Mystery Babylon the Great, Revelation chapter 17, that's Roman Catholicism. The mother church, Satan's church, and America has become the daughter of the whore. Yes. Thou art thy mother's daughter, America, that loatheth her husband and her children. And thou art the sister of thy sisters, which loathe their husbands and their children. Your mother was an Hittite, and your father an Amorite. And thine elder sister is Samaria, she and her daughters that dwell at thy left hand, and thy younger sister that dwelleth at thy right hand is Sodom and her daughters. Hmm. Yet hast thou not walked after their ways, nor done after their abominations, but as if that were a very little thing, thou wast corrupted more than they in all thy ways. As I live, saith the Lord God, Sodom thy sister hath not done, she nor her daughters, as thou hast done. Thou and thy daughters. So what he's saying is, Sodom, who was destroyed like that, these people are doing worse. Behold, this was the iniquity of her, thy sister Sodom. Pride. Fullness of bread. And abundance of idleness was in her hand, was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw good. Ha, verse 49. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. How could you have fullness of bread if there's abundant idleness? Well, when Satan is your God, huh? you know that movie they live? Give you sin? Give you what you want according to the flesh. Hence, keeping you under sin. Keeping you idle. Uh, and thank you, brother, um, for this reference. See, when Satan is your little G God, when Satan rules a nation, he gives them what? Like in the one video uh, that, that Lord had, uh, Rome is the mob. Excuse me. America is the mob. Conjure magic for them, and they will be distracted. 
take away their freedom and instill their sins, pornography, television, movie, sports. The Jesuits will give this nation death and America will be idle and love them for it. And hey, fullness of bread, right? But Luke chapter 4, why was there abundance of bread? Why were they idle? Very good reference. Very good reference, brother. Thank you. This was a collaborated effort. Luke chapter 4. <coughs> uh, verses 5 on to verse 7. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. All shall be thine. America worship Satan. Fullness of bread and abundant of idleness. But bread, they're not idle, but oh, they are spiritually. Because they're made dull and uh, null and void in their brain. They sleep. That movie by John Carpenter, They Live, very true. Talk about predictive programming. America sleeps spiritually because they're fed their entertainment. Uh, on that, Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 1 on to verse 7. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 1 on to verse 7. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with a covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. And virtually every nation, every nation on this earth, every nation that walked to go down into Egypt, Egypt type of the world. Who's the little jig out of this world, Satan? And have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh in type is a type of who? Satan. And trust in the shadow of Egypt. The Jesuits will give us death and you will love them for it. Yeah. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. And God is not the author of confusion, dear friend. For his princes were at Zoan and his ambassadors came to Hanes. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them nor be in help nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish from whence come the young and old lion, the viper and fiery, fiery flying serpent. They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptian shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. Abundance of idleness. When a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. God hates sodomy, friend. He hates it, and there's no excuse for it. And as we have seen, as I was, you are worthy of death. We don't kill people today like the Baptists want to do to those of you sodomites out there. No, vengeance belongs unto the Lord. I'm here warning you, because I was you. I was you. So, okay, what's the answer then, right? What's the answer? Ecclesiastes chapter 11. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 9 and 10. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the way in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. The sorrow from thy heart is that evil that is in your flesh. Sodomy. For childhood and youth are vanity. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14, 11 and 12. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. As you see on the banner of this channel. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. And for that, Philippians chapter 2. Every one of us is going to have to give an account of himself to God. Philippians chapter 2. I sent these notes to a couple of the brethren so they can see them. Uh, changing it up. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 and 12, on to verse 12. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Hmm. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But every one of us is going to give an account of ourselves to God. We who are saved, we're going to give an account of ourselves at the judgment seat of Christ. You who are lost, you're going to give account at the great white throne of judgment. And who's going to judge us? Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, verses 11 on to verse 16. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega. What does that mean? Uh, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is going to judge you. <laughs> yeah, those who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, are all about judgment. Judging ourselves according to the scriptures and judging others according to the scriptures. But it begins first at home, see. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the, into the city. For without our dogs, and we already saw the link of dogs with sodomy, for without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And see, if you don't have the authorized version of the scriptures in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15, the Bibles put morning star in there when it's son of the morning, not morning star. So the Bibles say that uh, Jesus has been kicked out of heaven. Yeah. Uh, Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. What's your answer? Luke chapter 12. Verses 4 on to verse 5. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him. 
which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Fear. You're going to give an account of yourself to God. And every little secret thing, and every little thing you've tried to hide is going to be broadcast for everybody to see. And you take no, you're not ashamed. You will be. The fear of the Lord. That is your answer. Uh, Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Your answer is the fear of the Lord. Why should you fear the Lord? Because he has power to put you into hell. And the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, he is our judge. He is your judge. And he has power to cast you into hell. He is the judge. Hmm? Uh, go back to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 28 on to verse 32, the close of the chapter. Okay? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, Calvin and the Baptists take this thing called the reprobate doctrine, which Calvin taught elect and non-elect. And these Baptists say that sodomites can't be saved because they're given over to a reprobate mind, kind of tweaking the Calvinistic doctrine of elect and non-elect. Um, I was a sodomite. And the Lord saved me. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. They're lying. The Lord can save you. There ain't a sin today that the Lord can't and won't forgive. The, the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost only counts when Jesus Christ himself is personally on the earth. Okay? That was before and during the kingdom of heaven. Not now. Link will be in the, video, in the description box for you. Okay? But, you hear this and reject it? Hmm. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Misery loves company, right? Who knowing the, the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Mm. And uh, Romans chapter 2, verses 2 unto verse 11. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Hmm. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, turning away from yourself unto God? That's the repentance. You, as a lost man, you can't repent of your sins even if you tried. The repenting uh, that you are doing is of yourself. But after thy hardness and impentient heart, not willing to kneel, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. Unless, of course, the Lord appears to you personally. Shut up. Sorry. No. You're without excuse. You've made it this far. You're without excuse. 
God hates what you're doing. And if you're going to reject the truth, God's wrath is upon you. God's love is not for you. God's love is at Calvary. But see, you got to remember, you want to know what your real problem is? Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. As it is written in the scriptures, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And we already read in the very beginnings of the scriptures that the heart of man is desperately wicked. That every thought of man's wicked imagination is evil. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And that includes you. As that includes me. It's you. This is talking about you, friend. You, personally. You're not good. You can't do anything good. You're not right. You're not seeking after God. If you, if you found this video, praise the Lord. But you're wicked. You're evil. You're not a good person. You can't save yourself. You're not going to push a peanut, peanut up a hill in order to make God pleased with you. There's an unrighteous, no, not one. And that includes you. God came into the world. This is a, a, a worthy, this is a, a notable saying worthy of all ex, uh, acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hello, of whom I am chief. It's you. You personally. You are a sinner. You and your sin, your sodomy, your sin, your evil. Put Christ on the cross. Christ died because of you. It's your fault. You did it. You can't say, well, it's someone else. No. It's your fault. You did it. There's no one good. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used to see. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. Why? There is no fear of God before their eyes. And, and you want to know something, dear friend? What awaits you? And I'm not going to do that. I'm happy. Blah, 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 blah. You're not a good person. You can't save yourself. Christ died because of you. It's your fault. Yeah, it's my fault. I put Christ on the cross. I'm not good. I killed him. He died because of me. He died because of you. And you know what is waiting for you, dear friend? Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, verses 43 on to verse 48. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell and to the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Now, our Lord Jesus is not talking about literally mutilating yourself and doing that. No. Um, if there's something that's keeping you from coming to the Lord, get rid of it. If there's a sin in your life, get rid of it. Okay? And also, where their worm dieth not your soul, and the fire is not quenched. There are those out there who say, well, go ahead and live in sin because when you go to the lake of fire, you'll just be burned up and your soul will be annihilated. No, 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 no. That's called uh, annihilationism. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Bollinger taught that. Mario, Super Mario teaches that. Uh, some of the, uh, as I uh, uh, remember right, some of the Seventh-day Adventists teach soul annihilationism. That you'll burn for a little while and boom, it'll be done. You so no. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched, your soul will burn forever and ever. No mercy. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, not for you. You don't have to go there. And if, the, if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee 
It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. If you're touching things, you shouldn't. If you're going to things, you shouldn't. And, and if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Unless you repent. Unless the Lord save you. Unless you come to him broken and contrite. Come to him on his terms. And he save you. You're going to hell. See. You're hearing the true gospel. Okay? You reject the true gospel. That Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for your sin. Okay? Unless you come to him broken of your self-righteousness. Okay? You can't save yourself. Unless you have godly sorrow, it's your fault. You sinned against God. You put him on that cross. It's your fault he died. And you better fear him because he can put you into hell. And that's the answer, dear friend, the fear of the Lord. The Lord scared the hell out of me 14 years ago. And he broke me of my self-righteousness. There's nothing I can do to be right in the sight of God. And I put him on that cross. It was because of me. I am the man. Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of her. Hello, of whom I am chief. It was my fault. And I feared the Lord. And I called upon his name and he saved me. And see, as someone of the church of the living God, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 2. Okay? Romans chapter 12. Verses 1 on to verse 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God doesn't save you to be like that, which he saved you out of. Okay? doesn't work that way. You are to align your life with the scriptures and live according to what God says in the scriptures and align your life thus. Okay? Why? So you can be an example. If the Lord saves you, you are an ambassador for him. Having the word of reconciliation and the ministry of reconciliation. And we are not to be... That's why some of you are with these Christians, you know, love them into the kingdom. Okay? Be like the world to win the world. No. We are supposed to be other than that. And uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. See, the Lord saves you, okay? He will rescue you from sodomy. But again, not at gunpoint. He wants you to choose. He wants you to make the right decision. But not according, not by force. Same with Satan again. Not by force. Okay? He wants you to make the right decisions. Okay? But he doesn't force it on you. You have to make the right decision. You have to choose. Good or evil? Which one is it? Colossians 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. If ye then be risen with Christ... Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections, affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Don't be like the world, okay? For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, put down, kill. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, Inordinate affection? Oh, perhaps maybe loving men with men, women with women, sodomy, incest, bestiality, whatever, sexual sin, okay? Evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake 
the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. And that doesn't apply for you if you're not saved. But see, you're a child of disobedience. You're a child of wrath. You're hearing the true gospel. And you, if you say, uh-uh, then you're a child of wrath. Your judgment is just. God's wrath is for you. God's love was manifested one time at the cross. You have to go to him on his terms, not your own. You don't boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. That's a thief and a robber. Okay? And Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Okay? Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 17 on to verse 24. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of the, their mind. See, if the Lord saves you, dear friend, you are going to be a new creature. And he will deliver you from sodomy. You will grow to hate sodomy. Okay? You will. But again, he's not going to force you to do anything. You've got to make the right choices. Okay? Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Right now your heart is blind. Hopefully this is opening it up. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, the old man, before you were saved. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, being a new creature and living as a new creature. Absolutely. And Second Peter chapter 3. Verses 8 on to verse 12. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Time, our Lord, Father, Jesus Christ, lives outside of our time. Uh, time does not exist to an eternal being. What is time to him? Time is only relevant for us. Okay? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance is not going from unbelief to belief. The devils also believe and tremble. The repentance is you turning away from your self-righteousness and turning to God for his mercy. Okay? But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? What manner of men ought we to be hmm. to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling? Fear and trembling. Not that we are saving ourselves. God, when he saves you, you are sealed with the Holy Ghost. That's himself. And you are to work out what he has put in. That is himself. If you do not repent and come to the Lord on his terms... Broken of yourself. You're not a good person, man. Woman, you can't save yourself. You personally have sinned against the Lord. And because of you, he died. Well, I didn't ask him to do that. No, you did not. But he did that. Because God so loved the past tense that he gave past tense his only begotten son. You know what the Christians like to preach to you? With their, God loves you. Uh, if you reject the gospel, God's love is not for you. 
God's love is not for you. His wrath is for you. And you've already figured that out, haven't you? So what do you do? Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Verses 1 under verse 5. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things? I tell you nay. But except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those, OT, uh, oh, or those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. John chapter 6, verses 35 on to verse 37. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. <clears throat> all that cometh unto the Father, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out and but see here, here's the problem dear friend you have to come to him on his terms you can't boot the door out of the way and Jesus Christ he is the door okay beware of people talk about booting the door just to let you know okay but you can't get Christ out of the way and climb up some other way it doesn't work that way Okay, And if you come to him on his terms, he will not cast you out. Okay, And John chapter 8, verses 23 under verse 24. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. What does that mean? What does that mean? John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verses 6 on to verse 9. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Jesus is the Father? What? Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, <laughs> Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, he is the only one who can save you. You go into a religion, to a system, doing a work okay repentance is not a work beware there are those out there who say just believe just believe and skip over what we looked at in Romans chapter 3 verses 10 under verse 18 Jesus Christ is the only one who can save you but you have to come to him on his terms and hopefully hopefully what we have looked at is breaking your self-righteousness because you can't save yourself. Your only hope is Jesus Christ. But you've got to be broken of that self-righteousness. You've got to be broken of that you're a good person and that there's something you can do. There's nothing you can do. It's your fault. It's not, well, I was born that way. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. A loaded gun was not pointed to your head at birth saying you're going to grow up wanting to lay with men or wanting to lay with women being a man being a woman it doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way you made the choice hey well well I, I I have trouble with this lust 
Oh, well then, be a eunuch. But you weren't born gay. Absurd. Absurd. A child before the time of uh, age of accountability is innocent. Hence, being made aware that they have sinned against God and what sin is and all that stuff. Same principle and meaning that you learn how to become a sodomite. You learn it. It's not something that you were born with. So if you've been broken, you're broken, huh? Then you go back to uh, Romans chapter 3. Okay? You're not good. You can't save yourself. It's your fault. And unless you repent of your self-righteousness and turn to the Lord before and beg Him for His forgiveness for what you did to Him, He's going to send you to hell, boy, woman. And you deserve to go there. You deserve to die. But see, our Lord has mercy. Here's your answer. Here's your solution. Romans chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 28. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And we already looked that the law was for what? An unrighteous man. Okay? But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And see, what some of these people will do will try to hide you under the umbrella of everybody has sinned. But see, the scriptures, verses 10 on to verse 18, address you personally. You can't hide under, well, we're all sinners. You personally are a sinner. You put Christ on the cross. Yes, everybody is a sinner. Amen. But you personally are the one who put Christ on the cross. He's your only hope. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation to faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, this time, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness that that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You're not going to go to a religious system and keep X, Y, Z in order to be saved. No. You're not good. It's your fault that Christ died. You're not righteous. You can't save yourself. Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross, is your only hope. Do you believe that? That he died for you, a wretched sinner who is chief? Never mind everybody else. You personally? I don't care. I personally, I don't care about whoever. I did it. It's my fault. What do you do now? Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Verses 8 on verse 13. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Calling upon the name of the Lord. See, when the Lord breaks you of your self-righteousness, and you are guilty, you are guilty and deserve to die, 
and you have godly sorrow because it is your fault. It's your fault. You can't blame someone else. All you can blame is yourself. When you reach that point and knowing that the Lord, he's going to send you to hell and justly, you've seen it already. We've gone through it. Repent of your self-righteousness. Call upon his name. Ask him for his forgiveness. You are the lesser calling upon the greater. And beware, there are those out there who say calling on the name of the Lord is a work. These people are not saved because they saved themselves by their mere belief. They were never broken of their self-righteousness. They never take accountability and responsibility for their personal fault for putting Christ on the, on the cross. And they have no fear of God. Beware of those people. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all them that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And only through brokenness, contrition, which is godly sorrow, and fear of the Lord, when you are brought to that point, and it's not step one, step two, step three, it's all happening right at once, isn't it, boy? Isn't it? What do you do? Get on your knees and cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask for his forgiveness. God, have mercy upon me, a sinner who is chief. Save me. You are the only one. Save me. Save me. You are brought to call upon the name of the Lord through brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. That's why you call upon the name of the Lord. Beware of those who say merely call on the name of the Lord. See, those people are called easy believers and devils. And they're scum. They like to skip over Romans chapter 3, verses 10 under verse 18, which we looked at, proving to you that the scripture says that you're not good enough. You can't save yourself. And that it's your fault that he died. Christ Jesus. First uh, Timothy. Thank you, Lord. Verse 15. This is the faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. You have been presented the clear gospel, dear friend. Now what do you do with it? Remember. Remember. God's not holding a gun at your head forcing you to do anything. Neither is Satan holding a gun at your head, forcing you to do anything. It doesn't work that way. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? That is going to be it for this video. Come. Let us reason together, you and I. The world... Christianity, it's okay to be, no it's not. We have, without a doubt, I believe, proven to you that you're in great danger. And if you're going to justify it and go about your merry way, your damnation is just. I pity you. But God can save you and forgive you. But you can't be a dog that returns to his, his own vomit. Or the sow that was washed to the wallowing of her mire. You can't do that. You've got to repent of your self-righteousness. You can't repent of your sins. You couldn't do that if you tried. The repenting is of your self-righteousness. Your self-righteousness is going to take you to hell. When you got these gay pride parades and Disney working for you and stuff like that. Beware. Beware, dear friend. Take heed to this warning. Please, consider what is being told to you. If you have questions or comments or want to get a hold of me, email addresses are in the description box. Consider your ways. The time is running out. Thank you. Pray to the Lord Jesus Christ, open your eyes 
and that you come to him broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon the name of the Lord, and that he save you. Thank you.